It's crazy because the night started off so good. Mm -hmm. It did. Y'all having so a pleasant. good time. So many wild nights start off like that. Up, oh, some people are joining us. What up, though? My name is Diara Kilpatrick, and you are here for another episode of the Diara from Detroit After Show. Today, I am joined by my friend Brian Terrell Clark, who plays T, and my sis from the D, Claudia Logan, who plays Crazy Moni. Welcome, y'all. What up, though? What, what up, up, though? Ooh, let's get into it. I know. Episode two. So we're off to the races. Yeah, things are heating up. Like, we know she's on to something now, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So Diara is moving solely off her intuition. You know, it's like she has a feeling. She has this discernment, and she's going with it. I don't know if we'll call it discernment this quickly this quick, or this okay. soon. We'll call it more delusion. <laughs> but, you know, people are so here for it. So is Diara Bricklin the poster child for Delulu Girls Everywhere, or is she just an amateur detective, a budding amateur detective. I think initially it's given. It's given to Lulu. It's it's given. And go it looks go to cute sleep. On you. It looks really cute. <laughs> it's on given. You. It's given. I'm gonna be honest. It's given. You need sleep and you got some good D. That's mm. what it's given. You got and that is the and recipe that combination. For delusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it just so happens that she's not crazy. She's not crazy about this particular thing. She's yes, not. yes. Because the Russian said, where is Deontay? And I thought he shot you. Yeah, I was yeah. really scared. I was like, oh my God, this whole time, like, you walking around with a wound? <laughs> <laughs> to kick things off, I want to know, what was your favorite scene in this episode? I really have to say I love the divorce party. <laughs> it was just, first of all, really fun to shoot a lot yeah. of different ladies. I think that's also carried into the whole story of this multifaceted room of women who were able to just come together on like a central topic of healing and yeah. like raising each other up, just coming from different backgrounds. That yeah. was really fun. And I got my hot Cheetos, like that was it. <laughs> I also kind of love that they all loved Mary J. Shout out to Mary. Mary. Yes. The voice yeah. of the broken black woman sometimes. <laughs> okay. like sometimes Sometimes you need a good soundtrack. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they all was rocking Mary. I think it was a great choice. Did you ever think of a different artist? It was always Mary J. I yeah. mean, I do think it is significant that people think of Mary J. Blige as like the struggle love anthem singer. I loved also that since we went back to the 90s, she's an artist who was popping in the 90s, but mm -hmm. also is still super relevant today. Yes, yes. yes. And it's such a good juxtaposition between that party and the party Diara decides the to go to. The second divorce party. The yeah. second divorce party. That party was intense, though, but mm -hmm. in, like, a fun way. And I think that it kind of showcased Detroit and that underground scene in a mm -hmm. real way because it does exist. I think it says yeah. a lot about her character, too, right? Mm -hmm. So she's, like, she's going after this Chris. Now we got this new idea, Chris Deontay. Mm -hmm. But actually, she's discovering herself. Yes. She decides to leave, like, this given path that all these black women are on at this party. And she goes, mm, yeah, I'm broken too, but I'm gonna take a different journey. And in, in seeking this guy, she finds something else about herself. Diara goes from one divorce party to a very different divorce party, yes. where she really embarks on like this self-exploration. She kind of goes down this rabbit hole doing things she probably never even thought she would do like BDSM play with the dominatrix, you know, as one does right. on a Friday night. But maybe she's been suppressing some of these things. So this leads me to my to a question for you, Claudia. Because I wonder if it's the same experience. Like, I feel like growing up in Detroit, there was a lot of emphasis on, like, you need to be a good girl. Mm. You need to go to college. Mm -hmm. You need to do these things. Yeah. Do you feel like that burden of, as a black woman, especially because we often get judged yeah. so much more harshly or the for consequences sure. for things can be so much more harsh? Yeah. Do you ever feel, I don't know, like the good black girl um, thing has prevented you from any kind of wild... <laughs> now we're talking to Types me. Of sexual exploration. <laughs> we're talking to me. Yeah. But no, um, I, I totally agree. I think not even just Detroit, I think any city, mm -hmm. and it could like go from region to region, that black women, we're already born into a hypersexuality that we didn't even ask for. Yeah. So I think our family or whatever household that we're in is like doing their best to make that a complete 180. So we're in the mindset of like, oh, when you go out into the world, no, you gotta do this, you don't do that, because they're already gonna wanna put it on you anyway. Mm -hmm. But as time has gone on and things have evolved and this generation is just so free in their sexuality and wanting to find pleasure at the core of it all. I think that's where it is, mm -hmm. pleasure. And mm -hmm. we have been stunted from that because we're trying to keep up a good girl role. Or even, you know, not even 
you know, I still got the good grades, but you know, sometimes I want to be in the streets, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like having a balance as well as knowing that that pleasure has consent and it's safe. I just thought that scene was just so good. I wanted to be there. You wanted to be there. <laughs> I want to be in the space. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool as a character to see her go there mm -hmm. because it seems like whatever was going on in her marriage, whatever it was, wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And we still aren't exactly sure all right, the details. Right. Ooh, it's loaded, child. You know what I mean? But it's so cool to see her go, I'm not sitting at that party. I'm actually gonna go to this place, and now that I'm here, I'm gonna explore some things for yes. myself. Cause she does take the molly. Yeah. And she does, you know, have this moment with Mistress Hot Sauce. I think it says a lot about the freedom that she wants to have in this moment. And I think that with pleasure being the main focus of it all, that mm. black women are able to just dive in mm -hmm. and feel safe in that. Which one, I wanna ask you, what do you feel like black exploration, aside from sexuality, looks like, feels like? I think it looks different for every black right. woman. I think what's important is what you said is like giving yourself permission to put your pleasure on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Because of course, black women, we all know we serve our community, right. we serve our families, but sometimes we forget about our own pleasure and, and don't even know, feel like sometimes, especially the Virgos <laughs> and the Capricorns can feel like if I'm too happy, maybe I need to go do something. Maybe somebody needs me, but right. like, really figuring out what feels good to you and moving in the direction of that. Of course, safely and with consent. Yes. But I think that's that's important, is prioritizing your pleasure. Not just your well-being, but your mm -hmm. actual, this feels really good. Like the joy center, for yeah. sure. Yeah. If more black women did that too, I feel like, or if we allow ourselves to do that, mm -hmm. we won't be so, honestly, it's, it's really tiring sometimes to be a black woman <laughs> in like, America. I want to be so exhausted. Uh, I want to be so exhausted. But when we allow like small things, like the work doesn't have to be strenuous to do that. Like mm -hmm. the work can be breathing, living, you know, playing that Mary J. Blige song and yelling, thinking about Tyrone. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like just allowing that to happen <laughs> just opens up a lot more joy centers everywhere else. You both said that the divorce party was one of your favorite scenes. This is basically a scene where Aja just jumps in and she's like, girl, I got you. Uh, I'm gonna fix your life. She tries to ayanla her in this moment. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about friends who try to fix us Ooh, or what yeah. we want from our friends. Do we want them to fix us or do we mm. want them to just listen? It's good intentions most of the time. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to tell you what to do. It's just they think the best of you. And if we look at it in that way when we're seeking that help or even if we don't seek it, like you <laughs> did, like you you weren't seeking that. You were seeking that right. deep. Nobody asked you for your help. Nobody asked it's you for your <laughs> Nobody it's asked that. you. Nobody asked you. Yeah, and I used to have Superman complex. Yeah. Like yeah. Captain Sabo. Yeah. You know what it's I mean? As soon, it is the Aries in us, right? It's like that thing of like, I know you need help, so of course I got you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think, just as a friend, when you jump in to save people all the time, you kind of stop their own growth journey. moments. Yeah. yeah, it's like not my job to live your journey for mm. you. And sometimes in your journey, there are gonna be hard things that help to expand you so that you can become who you really are. Yeah. And this moment in the show is a little tricky because mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. an intervention for her divorce, <laughs> and she ain't really even fully divorced yet. yet. It's like, you're doing too much. It, it was a lot you're for doing that too moment. Much, She's man. doing way too much. Yeah, yeah. like the, the <laughs> balloons and like all the people and the... Then she puts you on the spot. That's the part I was like, yo. She was like, so, Diara, tell everybody in the what room. What you're doing. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yo. Yeah, and you can't force a healing. You can't force That's a healing. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You can't save people from their lessons, and you cannot force a healing. People have to be ready. But I feel like I'm like you. I'm that friend a lot of the time that's like, here's the plan, here's the schedule. That's like, me. you complain to me, now I have here presented back to you a yeah. three-part plan to fix your life. And sometimes you just can't. Yeah. You can't do that. It's a double-edged sword, because the sister circle is so important. It's so important for somebody to say, I've been brokenhearted, I've been where you've been, and mm. I've come through it. But the other side of that is people will project how their thing ended onto you, or they'll project their story onto you. So yeah. it's like, it was a complicated party. And unfortunately, she had to go. <laughs> and she did go. And she did. To a different kind of party. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's talk about favorite line of the week. For me, I really like I'm not basic or old or sad. I like Megan Thee Stallion. I just don't know what she's always talking about. For me, <laughs> that can be true. That can be true. Sex already feels good. If you need all this, maybe you're not doing it right. Oh, you sound basic. 
and old and sad. I am not basic or old or sad. I listen to Megan Thee Stallion. I just don't know what the fuck she's talking about all the time, but I'm listening. Do y'all have favorite lines of the week? I feel like it's just so Detroit to say, y'all got yak. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a funeral for my marriage. Is that all right with you? Y'all got yak. That's something my dad would say. Really? Yak. My dad calls it yak. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a Detroit player right there. Yeah. One of my favorite lines from that last episode was, everybody should mind their business. Yeah. That's the job, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, what's the exact line? Minding your business this is a full-time full job, job, and job. everyone should stay employed. Yeah. That's the line. <laughs> that's the line. And right now, DR is not, is not holding down her job. She's not holding down her <laughs> full-time job. Well, that's the question of the series, in a way. It's yeah. like... As a community, do we mind our own business or do we get in there and do we fix some of these problems that we have? Because you know in our community, if you want to do a wellness check on certain people in your family, would you want to call the police to no. send them after Absolutely them? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So maybe at some point you'll call Diara. Uh, I okay, love that idea. all right. <laughs> and, we do, and we do say in the school all the time, if you see something, Say, say something. something. But we did not say go into the sex club <laughs> and argue with a Russian with a gun. I think also mm. there's like, there's mm. entry. Is Diara and maybe Moni too, like, is there a slight attraction to the danger? That's what it is. Because y'all have your normal lives and like maybe y'all are tired of the normal lives. Like, mm. is there something attractive about? 100%. Yeah. I think yeah. that they end up being drawn to the thrill yes. of the Even danger. if we don't end up successful the first time, right? Yeah. It's just like, wow, we got this far. This is crazy. Yeah. And you and were we right. Like it. And, and she That's was what's right. crazy. It's like you like it and you were right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like she was seeking this guy and she was completely wrong. Completely wrong. She was right. This is crazy. Yeah. Okay, so I want to know what the viewers think. Find us in the comments, wherever we are. If you see me in a grocery store, you could tell me. If you see Claudia at the BDSM club, you could tell her. How should Diara move forward? And we want to know just how far you would go to get the actual truth. Mm. So while y'all think on that, cue up the next episode and see what Diara decides to do. Okay, so small spoiler alert. Diara is stubborn AF on this journey, and the journey does not stop here. So we're very grateful. That means that we will see you again on the next episode. We out.